The following program is produced and sponsored by you, the TBN Partners, and is only made possible through your generous support. tonight with this gorgeous crowd here in Miami just telling them that tonight is going to be one of the greatest nights that we have ever experienced together this is going to be a night of joy unspeakable because we know that God is in control and this whole program <laughs> We know, everyone knows what our precious, beautiful brothers and sisters have gone through in Haiti. We've all seen it. We've all cried. We can't cry anymore. And tonight is going to be just rejoicing in what our God is going to do for every single person person in Haiti. I think they can't even imagine. <laughs> I don't think they can imagine. Eye is not seen and ear not even heard the great beautiful things that God has for every single soul that calls themselves Haitian around the world. I think God is just going to make it the most incredible act that he has performed in a long, long, long time on this earth. Just seeing the joy. Yes! <laughs> and we all believe that. And we're receiving it. We've already talked about it. We know it's going to happen. And tonight is going to be speaking what we know is going to happen for those precious people. I have some of the most one. Y'all stand up. Come over here. This is Kirk Nowry. He is with Samaritan's Purse. And they were down there within seconds of this disaster, as always. They've operated They've sent doctors and helpers and food and beans and tons of stuff. What all have you guys done? Oh, the first thing we did, Jen, was we went in with medical relief doctors and nurses 
temporary shelter, uh, partnering with food distributions to orphans. We've always had a heart for children, and so we went in trying to take care of those orphans first. Uh, water purification systems, providing clean water, survival supplies, just trying to be the helping hand of Jesus to those suffering people. Isn't that wonderful? I love that. I knew that. I called Samaritan's Purse within an hour after it happened, and I said, we're with you guys, whatever you're going to do down there. TBN's with you 100%. And they've already been down there for days. And you have a doctor here yes. that has already, come here just real quickly. We're just going to run real quick around. And he is a doctor, and you went within how? We were, we were on the ground within 25 hours. And you, how many operations have you done? Uh, when I left uh, Friday, we had over 80 surgeries. He has done 80 surgeries. The team has. The team of Samaritan's Purse has. Right. And everyone's doing well that you... It's, it's just been a blessing, and uh, it, without Lord's hands, we couldn't do it. Oh, I it's, love that. How many doctors are you sending and nurses? Samaritan's Purse. We have 260 doctors on the waiting list right now that we'll be sending in shortly. Wow. See? things that Jesus people are already doing to make a difference in these lives. I love it. Give me one wonderful story. Well, the, the, when we got there, it's just total chaos, as you can imagine. And after the uh, Christian physicians, nurses, and helpers came in, you can walk through the hospital, and it was great to hear that the hospital administration said, there's something different about these doctors. <laughs> so, still. And so it's just, it's, I'm just blessed to be part of it. I'm so glad. And how many do you have down there right now? We have 71 in the field right now, staff. We've begun to rotate some out, just exhausted, and send others in. But we've got flights going in every day uh, providing uh, relief. I love that. Isn't that wonderful? And Franklin Graham, who all of you know, Dr. Graham's son, who's head of Samaritan's Purse, is in India right now in a huge crusade. They had 6,000 salvations right now, so they're going around the world <laughs> doing good things. But he sent us a little roll-in that we're going to see in just a minute. And here is our precious Pastor McKnight that is going to... <laughs> good news about what his church is doing there in Orlando, one of the greatest churches. I was there New Year's Eve, and your sermon blessed me from the top. And I received what you said, Pastor. Double grace and double favor in 2010. And it's happened because I received it for me. I love it. What all are you doing? Um, we have um, sent, we sent three semi-trucks so far um, <laughs> since Saturday. Um, we are planning to, uh, so many people in the community, we did a night of comfort for the people of Haiti in our community. Um, it was an awesome night. We prayed um, in the Creole. We had the Haitian pastors that we just came. It was a picture of the kingdom. I Black, <laughs> white, Hispanic, Latino, Haitian, Jamaican, Bahamian. Oh it was an awesome night, man. All good. It's all good. And our pastors tonight have just got words of encouragement, words of love that we're going to share for those precious people. Pastor Rich Wilkerson from right here in my house. Oh, yeah. Well, um, we obviously about, you know, 60% of our church here in Miami is Haitian. And uh, these are the warmest people you ever meet oh, in your life. believe me. And they love like yeah. no other people I love. And you so they saved your ministry. Well, when we moved to Miami almost 12 years ago, we were just, we knew God wanted us here, but we didn't know what we were doing. You know, I'd been an evangelist my whole life. My kids were going, Dad, what are you doing? My wife was going, I'm going to get, you know, she said, but <laughs> the point was we were just kind of upside down, Jen. And it was the Haitian people in Miami that surrounded us, put their arms around us, and accepted us full on. It really saved our lives here. 
And when this happened, I mean, I, I cried a lot. You said, what did you, you do for I've cried. Yeah. <laughs> and I have I prayed. And, and, and everybody can pray. My, my son, Graham, is here tonight. And my oldest son, John Fulton, left this morning with his wife and 36 doctors for Port-au-Prince. They're there now on the ground. Uh, my second son is traveling all over, raising money for Haiti and sending it and all. And, and Graham was saying, Dad, what can I do? Uh, uh. Graham had a terrible injury when he was a baby, meningitis. He had a long talk with me. He said, Dad, I want to do something. Oh. I said, you know, Graham, you can pray, son. That's it. And everybody can pray. That's it. I, I call Matt. Your son, right away, said, Matt, we're here. We're in Miami. We're on the ground here. Whatever you want to do. Uh, I think within a, f a few hours, Don Tipton called me from Friendships.org, which is uh, really a ministry that TBN has helped yeah. just an inc incredible way through the years. It's a humanitarian effort. And, of course, out of Miami, there's so much stuff from around America, Jan, that's coming here to the port first to go over. And so Don Tipton said, Rich, uh, Jan told me to call you and, and, and just say, you, you got to do whatever we want you to do. I said, hey, that, you, that's, what we, that's, that's our heart because that's your heart. That's Paul's heart. And that's Don Tipton's heart. And so we've been able, by the grace of God, to go into the port of Miami. They've cleared the deck for us. They've opened the Bless doors. Them. No charge Bless fees them. for Bless anything. Them. Bless them. Bless in, them. in fact, the ship that will be going over and back and forth is called Integrity. Yeah. And it's called a stern loader. That means that it loads from the rear. And uh, they will literally, Coast Guard ships are, are going to move for the integrity when it comes into port to back into the port. Yes. And the warehouse that they've let us use, we can literally move this stuff right onto the boat. 50 feet away from the warehouse is the back of the boat. And so tons and tons and tons and tons of materials. So we're going to be on the ground right here in Miami. And you're going to be telling everybody to send stuff here. <laughs> we're going to be directing the trucks and all that. So then we'll talk about it through the night. Oh, but I that's just it. one thing. And we're I excited about it. it. Do you see what God's doing? Amen. Do you Amen. see what God's doing? Hallelujah. He is moving heaven and earth Hallelujah. for the Haitian people. Amen. I love that. I love it. I love it. And Les, what are we doing? We are doing so much. One thing, we're doing some cool things at the whole Land Experience. You know, Jan, on Saturdays, isn't it amazing? The place fills up. I'm telling you, we have church. You know, we got some other actors here, and they can testify to this. Uh, it is so exciting because the people of Haiti love Jesus. I don't want to hear anything, that anything else, you know? You know, I had a chance. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to be doing something coming up soon where we're actually going to allow you to come to the whole Land Experience. Your ticket it's going to go straight to 100%. Haiti. 100%. Amen. We're probably either going to do one or two days, and we're just thinking, what a great way to return. So not only you be there, we want you to tell your friends, and this is a great way to help support a good cause. You're going to be blessed, bring a lost friend, and see some people get saved right. in Haiti. You know, just another story. I, was, uh, I, I used to fly down there. That's right. I was a missionary in Haiti for over a year. Spent seven years yes. flying to the islands and, and flying, and we set up um, a bunch of airports. And I'm telling you, my heart was so distraught. When I saw those streets where I was walking, I, you know, I, I can't imagine the folks all through around the world that have people in Haiti. And I'm going to encourage you something. What Satan took to destroy, guess what? Yeah. There's going to be a light shining. Oh. And let your good works shine before men to glorify the Father. What he meant for evil, God is going to make it for good. You know, just like your sermon, I believe in double portion. I believe Haiti's going to receive such a blessing on this. You're going to see something emerge. Haiti used to be the most amazing island of all the Caribbean. It was the most beautiful. And people have pillaged that island and have extorted and just totally destroyed that place. You're going to see things turn around from this Amen. point on. Because God is my witness. Hallelujah. Haiti's Hallelujah. going to rise up from the ashes and be blessed, blessed, blessed. I love it. Yeah, Les was a missionary there for a year, and you traveled in and out of there, flying missionaries in yep. and out for seven years. He's a pilot, too. So, Jesus can fly. Huh? <laughs> Praise God. God says, you know, Jesus is your pilot, right? Not your co-pilot. <laughs> and we have with us here, you got your Bible. Where's your Bible? I want you to read that scripture. Run. Get. This is Brother Roland from right here in Miami. He is Haitian, 
And you know, when I thought about bringing a group together here tonight, I wanted Brother Roland, and I went up to meet him in the room, and he read the most beautiful scripture that only a Haitian could read. And this is what the Lord gave him about Haiti. And let's just listen to it together. It's Isaiah 60. Arise, shine, for your light has come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Come on. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and deep darkness the people. But the Lord will arise over you, and his glory will be seen upon you. The nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your rising. Lift up your eyes all around and see. They all gather together. They come to you. Your sons shall come from afar. Your daughters shall be nursed at your side. <laughs> then you shall see and become radiant. And your heart shall swell with joy. Because the abundance of the sea shall be turned to you. The wealth of the nation shall come to you. <laughs> Verse 10, the sons of strangers, foreigners, shall build up your walls, I love it. and their kings shall minister to you, for in my anger I struck you, but in my favor I have had mercy on you. <laughs> This is the final verse we will read. Therefore, your gates shall be open continually. They shall not be shut day or night that men may bring to you the wealth of the nation <laughs> and their kings in procession. in your presence that Satan is so scared of, I can tell you, he's gone. He saw Miss Jewel. He's gone. This is a prayer warrior that lives and works at Holy Land. And I tell you, she has changed the whole atmosphere of Holy Land through her precious prayers and prayers of deliverance. Good prayers. You know, we Pentecostals love to be delivered. We just love that. <laughs> and she's good at that. Miss Jewel, you pray for us right now. All of us. Praise God. Just before I pray, same scripture that the Lord gave me last night. And when I was up in the room today, I was praying. He brought that same scripture back to me. I have to say this. I was on the plane. My That's the word, I was already at Isaiah 60. I read Isaiah 60 on the plane. The Lord said, open your Bible to Isaiah 60. Amen. your name. Oh God, here we are, God, standing before an awesome God. Oh God, you are awesome in all your ways, God. And right now, we acknowledge who you are, God. You are the Lord that made it, the heaven and the earth. You are the Lord that created us, oh God. You are the God that healeth all manner of diseases. You are the God delivers everything, God. You are the God, oh God, that changes for a rearrange, God. You just rearranging things, God, to get them in order, God. And oh God, we want to say thank you, God, because there's no God 
and we go up, you are there. And we go down, you are there. And we go to the east, west, and north, you are there, God. Where can we go, God? We are in your presence, oh God. And we stand before you, God. We stand before you, God. Lifting up your peoples tonight, God. We lifting up your peoples, oh God. We lifting up your peoples in Haiti tonight, God. We lifting them up to you, oh God. Oh God, we know, God, that you are a healer, God. We know that you are deliverance, oh God. We know that you are Savior, oh God. Oh God, save, oh God. Oh God, the ones that have not been found, oh God. Father, we pray right now, God, that you will move that block, God, and they will yet be alive, oh God. They will yet have breath, God. We realize, God, that the thief coming but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But God, you said you came that we may have life and may have it more abundant. And the people in Haiti have life and they have it more abundant right now, God. Right now, God. And Father, we lift up the ones that's hurt, God. We lift up the heavy laden, God. We lift up the heartbroken, God. We lift them up to you, God. We lift up every person that you sent there, God. We lift them up to you, God. Oh, God, you said in your word, God, that no weapon, God, that's formed against us, God, shall prosper, God. But every wagon tongue, God, come up against us, God, shall be condemned, God. God, we thank you. And Satan, right now, right now, right now, Satan, right now, Satan, right now, Satan, right now, Satan, we said you know this. You can take a flight, because you cannot stop nothing that God has planned. You cannot stop God's will. You cannot stop his plan. And we command you to leave. We command you to leave right now. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, God, we want you to be glorified, be glorified, God, be glorified, God, God, we want you to get the glory, God, oh God, hate it not, Lord, hate it just like Jerusalem, God, when the gates were down in Jerusalem, God, when Nehemiah heard about it, God, he said, I must go and build a gate. And Father, we thank you for the people that you are sending. We thank you for the help, God. We thank you, God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus is against you. Satan, the blood of Jesus is against you. We render you helpless. You don't have no power. You have no power. You have no power, and the blood of Jesus is against you. We command you. We take authority over you right now in the name of Jesus to loosen God's people. Take your filthy hands off of God's people. Take your filthy hands off of God's people. And God, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you for TBN, oh God, how you are sending people's God. How you are sending your word, God, every satellite, God, in every country, God. We thank you that the people can hear the word. And God, we do declare that you are Lord. We do declare, God, that you are Christ. We do declare, God, that you are the only true and living God. You are God. You are God. And beside you, God, there is no other. There is no other power. There is no other power. There is no other name that we can call on and be set free. Jesus is his name. Jesus is his name. Jesus is his name. I call on the Lord, and he comes to have a rescue. I call on the Lord, and he heard me. I call on the Lord, and he delivered me. His name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. 
His name is Jesus. So no weapon, no weapon, no weapon that's formed against us shall prosper. And we declare the victory. We are walking in faith and we are walking in victory. We are desperate. We are desperate. We are desperate to win in 2010. We are desperate to be overcomers. We are desperate to take back what the devil has stole from us. We are taking it back in 2010. We are winners. We are winners in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. God, I give you glory. I give you praise, God. I thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Come, Hallelujah. come on, just lift him up and give thank God you, Lord. praise. Thank come you, Lord. Come on, bless him like you love him. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Somebody ought to shout the voice of time. All over this world, somebody ought to shout the voice of victory. in the heavens. Somebody ought to praise God like heaven just opened a new window. Somebody ought to praise him like heaven just opened a new window. Let there be a sound from Miami to give God glory. Hallelujah. Lord have mercy. I feel the Holy Ghost. Father, we pray right now in the name of Jesus that you begin to release angels all over the world. And we pray now that Haiti is covered by the blood of Jesus. We command that no weapon that is formed will prosper. I thank you for resources that you've opened up the blood, the floodgates, and we're covered by the floodgates. And I pray right now in the name of Jesus that no principality, no evil spirit, no sickness, death, or disease will take residence up in Haiti. But the name of the Lord is to be magnified. Jesus is in Haiti. Jesus is in Haiti. God is in Haiti. The Holy Spirit is in Haiti. Healing is in Haiti. And we thank you, God, right now. We pray for the missionaries. We pray for the doctors. We pray for the nurses. We pray for the military troops. We pray for those that are even haven't been found yet. Breathe life. We pray in the name of Jesus that resources come. Open up the floodgates. Give us a strategy. Thank you for TBN. Thank you for Jan Crouch having a heart for Haiti. Thank you for Dr. Paul Crouch having a heart for Haiti. Thank you for the body of Christ. We pray that rulers and kings will drop their differences and lay aside their theological differences and come together. We call forth revival. We call forth revival. We call forth the outpouring of the Holy Ghost. And we thank you that salvation is in Haiti. Salvation is in Haiti. And we're going to praise you for your God and your good. And we magnify you that everyone that's grieving send ministering angels not just to wipe the tears away from their eyes God but wipe them away from their heart and some kind of way let them do like Job when he had his worst day the Bible say he fell to the ground in worship because healing is in worship so tonight we lift our hands from TBN in Miami and we're going to release a sound of worship so people might be healed in Jesus name in Jesus. Come on, church, let's believe God right now. Thank you, Lord, for answered prayer. Thank you for answered prayer. Hallelujah. I just feel, I just feel a prophetic word coming on me right now. You know, the Bible has told us the news of, that we are to call things that are not as though they were. And if you have followed recent history, you would see that 
Dubai, part of the Arab Emirates, has literally grown out of the ground in about 10 years, less than 10 years, to be one of the most stunning places in all the world. You can Google it and see the buildings, the hotels, the beaches. It is stunning. And I, I feel in my heart tonight that at one time Haiti was the pearl, the jewel of the Western Hemisphere. I mean, it was unbelievable. And the enemy has had his way for so long. But I believe that God is one is to call things that are not as though they were. If God could stop the sun for Joshua, if he could turn it back for Hezekiah, I believe tonight that God is ready to do a creative miracle in the nation of Haiti, beginning with the capital, Port-au-Prince. And tonight I see it. Revival, as Pastor mentioned, revival coming. We're seeing them sing in the streets. We're seeing them praise God in the midst of the rubble and the pain and the heartache and the death and the suffering and the amputations and all the pain. People are raising their broken bodies to give the King of Kings and the Lord and Lord praise. Haiti is tired of letting the rocks cry out. They have subjugated the rocks to let themselves praise the Lord. And I'm going to prophesy tonight that if we Christians around the world will band together and pray, everybody can pray. Some of you are going to give. Some of you are going to go. But we believe within 10 years, God can raise Haiti just like he did Dubai, a Christian nation out of the earth. It will be one of the stops on the cruise lines because it will be the new Maui, the new Nassau, the new Bermuda. It will be the new jewel before the Lord's done with it. Can you say amen? Let's agree together, right? Everybody raise your hands. Let's just begin to praise God. Father, right now in the name of Jesus, you've led us to speak it out. Now I pray, God, that we would confirm your word. According to Matthew 18, verse 19, you said, If any two agree on earth as touching anything in my name, it shall be done for you by my Father who's in heaven. We band together tonight at this studio in Miami. We band together as an audience around the globe. And Lord, we ask you to return Haiti to the jewel of the Western Hemisphere. God, to take it out of the rubble into revival for your glory. And new life will come out of this certain death. New life will come in the mighty name of Jesus. If you believe it, say amen. Hallelujah. 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 that I want us to, uh, to join in. I have Rich's mic here, guys, that I want us to join in and agree that every dime that is raised by anyone anywhere in the world will go exactly where God wants it to go. I don't want one penny to be diverted anywhere rather than where God wants it to go. If all of this money that's being raised around the world will go directly and bless that country and change that country, then Jesus can do it. Jesus will get all the praise and the glory. And we pray for the leadership that is taking the money down there and the leadership that is in charge of how it's going to be spent down there. But let's just pray that anybody that would divert, divert one penny, one penny of that money, that God would get them. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. We just believe that. We believe it in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you for that. I praise you for that. I believe it. I receive it. And Lord, now we pray for the leadership in Haiti that they will have wisdom beyond their imagination to know how to begin this beautiful project of Haiti 
being a lighthouse to the world. Lord, we thank you. Thank you we believe it. We Hallelujah. receive it. And we love you for it. We love you for Hallelujah. it. In Jesus' Hallelujah. name. Wow. Hallelujah. Wow. Hallelujah. Woo. Glory. Glory. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Lord, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. You know, so many of you, I know many, many, many of you, have given, you know, by the way, I have a check right here in my, in, in my <clears throat> Bible. So many of you have sent into TBN. This is not a fundraiser. We're not even going to ask for money tonight. It's nothing about, that. God's already provided. He has already provided. Every dime we need is already there. But some of you sent in, and it was very important to Paul and the Board of Trinity Broadcasting that we help Samaritan's Purse, so we're sending $100,000 to those of you. They do so much. And you just keep going in Jesus' name. I love you for that. And you tell Franklin I love him. I know we've got a little roll in from him, but you know what? Let's just kind of regroup right now. Les, can you sing? your song. We're just going to thank you. So many of you have already given, and we just want to say thank you for giving to the Lord. And then we're going to tell all the other miracles that's happening. Go ahead and sing.
sacrifices that you made They were unnoticed here on earth And in heaven not proclaimed And I know up in heaven You're not supposed to cry But I'm almost sure I saw tears in your eyes As Jesus took your hand And you stood before Child, look around you. Great is your reward. Thank you for giving to the Lord. I am a life that was changed. I don't know of anyone in the world, really, an organization that has given more to the world in the past 20 years, 30 years, than uh, Samaritan's Purse. Every war, every earthquake, every tsunami, everywhere there's people hurting, they're there. And I mean, they do practical, wonderful things. They uh, build bridges, they build hospitals, they... They dig wells. They learn to make them learn to plant gardens and take care of themselves. It's just wonderful what they do. And uh, I know I called the day that the earthquake happened because, of course, we called Don Tipton. He has the big friendships. They were already loading them. He said to me on the phone, he'd been watching the news too. He said, Jan. I'm already loading the ships. We're ready to go. The day, the minute it happened. And they've got, oh my, unbelievable, unbelievable things. <laughs> TBN had two generators, uh, huge. I mean, they wouldn't even fit on this platform that uh, we couldn't use anymore because they weren't the right something, something for the FCC now. So, but they're perfect in Haiti. We loaded those. Paul had bought a helicopter for him to go right on the top of his boat uh, several years ago. They have trucks on the boat that when you back up to the yep. dock, you pull a, a truck off and you have your own transportation. They carry their own gas in the bottom to fill their vehicles and their trucks and everything. Food, toys, clothes, tents, everything you can name. And it's on its way. Don Tipton is down there. You were going to go with him and you stayed to be with me. But he's already down there scouting it out. And, and I have an NGO, which is a nonprofit organization in Haiti. So I can get a, a, you know, access to, to the docks and get stuff taken in. They're using my NGO. And I also have a UN status, which is going to be... Oh unbelievably needed right now and I'm so thankful for it <clears throat> so they're on their way my assistant for 20 years Danny York is down there he he would live there if I would let him he loves it 
He, he'll get in the street. He'll move stuff. He will do anything. And they're down there already scouting it out. Billy Henderson, who is a street preacher. He used to be called uh, Soldiers for Jesus. Street preacher, they're down there. And when those people don't have a place to go inside, he's going to be preaching to them right on the street and leading them to Jesus. And we've got, we've got a, a just people that love Haiti. You know, once you've ever been... You leave your heart there. I, it, I've been to every country you can name in the world, and I, I didn't leave my heart anywhere like I left it in Haiti. And we're, we're doing everything we can, and we love it, and, and we're happy to do it. And uh, But anyway, Samaritan's Purse, I needed to call them because Don said one thing everybody's asking for is that when these precious people that have broken bones all through their body, and there's probably 100,000 of those, we have no way to x-ray it. We have no way of showing what needs to be set. Within an hour or so, they call me back. Smyrna's Purse said, you tell Don, we've got two portable oh. x-ray machines, and they're on their way. It's just amazing. <clears throat> And I just see everybody working together. You know, Haitian people, I just want to tell you, all of the love that you have shown through all that you've been through down there, not just this, but over the years, is going to so pay off right Amen. now. Amen. All the good seed you have sown of being strong when you didn't have anything, but you would still love Jesus and those beautiful smiles. You can never forget a Haitian smile. It's from ear to ear, and I love it. And you know what? It starts in their heart. Their smiles start right down here, and you can tell. I, I, they're just very special people. I love them so much, and we're going to do everything we can. This isn't a just now. We've been there 25 years. We've been doing everything we could for 25 years. This is going to go on another 25 years and more. <clears throat> but we've just, uh, I, I love it that Samaritan's Purse and Don and everybody and you and you, Pastor, everybody just working together. No one wants the glory. They want it to all go to Jesus. Jesus, you get the glory. And I love that. And every, everything that is done through Smile of Child and Samaritan's Purse, they will say, this is from Jesus. Mm -hmm. Now, they'll do it through the pastors. I love that. They love to go through the pastors to give all the food and everything. But those, those missionaries that are down there that we know that we work with, Jay Threadwell, God bless you. One of his churches collapsed and 30 people were killed. Yeah. Did you know that? I mean, it, he just, he, but he's smiling. He's still smiling. He's still saying God is still on the throne. Yeah. He never forsaken his own. Yeah. Oh, I love it. And precious Max Manning, so many missionaries I know down there are just carrying on with the joy of the Lord because they know that Jesus is in control. They know that we're going to come through. Did you know that? They know that. They know that our prayers are going up every minute. And so they're down there just saying, come on, Jesus. <laughs> Let's see the difference, Lord. I love you. But we have a little roll-in from Franklin. And uh, we're going to get this, this roll-in. Was he in Haiti or is he in India? He was in India. And this is just a little love from Dr. Billy Graham's oldest son, Franklin Graham, who is my buddy. And we've blessed him for 30 years in his ministry. And he didn't want to leave us out tonight, so he sent us a little roll-in. Let's watch it. Franklin, we love you. Uh, right now, I'm in uh, India, uh, where I'm holding a crusade in Chennai. 
but uh, we have a massive relief effort going on there in Haiti. The Billy Graham Evangelistic Association Samaritan's Purse is responding. Uh, we've got about 60 people down there right now working. We're working in their hospitals. Uh, we're working, uh, trying to provide uh, temporary shelter, uh, clean water. And I want to thank you for all that you have done to facilitate the work of Samaritan's Purse in Haiti and for the investment that you have made over the years in Haiti. And Jan, uh, this is a terrible tragedy that has taken place. Uh, these people, I'm telling you, not only are they in trouble, but they're going to be in trouble for months and years to come. You know, I've been asked by secular organizations and media, what's the difference between Samaritan's Purse or the BGA as it relates to other organizations? What can we provide that the others cannot provide? Well, you know, the relief, uh, food, water, shelter, these are things that we can do and, and many other people can do as well. But there's a spiritual dimension here that a secular organization cannot meet. When a man or a woman has lost their family, have lost their children, their house is gone, and they're the only survivor left, uh, there is a spiritual dimension here that a, a secular organization cannot meet. These people need you to put your arms around. We need to pray with them. We need to love them. And we need to open up the scriptures and just and, and, and bring comfort that only Christ can give. And that's what the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association of Samaritans first do. We meet physical needs, but we're, we're there to meet the spiritual need as well. And that today, right now in Haiti, is as important as anything else, the spiritual need. I know in the next few weeks, uh, this may be out of the news, but we're going to continue to be there. And we need your help. We need your prayers. And everybody who's watching, everybody who's a partner of TBN, you say, well, what can I do? Do. Uh, you can pray. Uh, pray for the churches. Pray for the Christians there. Pray for those of us that are going, that are responding. And we need your continued support and prayer. God bless you. Thank you, Jan. Thank you for all that you have done on behalf of the people of Haiti and, and where I am right now in, in, in India uh, at a school right here in Chennai. Uh, people here love you and thank God for you. And we thank God for you. God bless you. And, you know, everybody needs somebody to believe in them. We all need believed in. We all need trust. It gives us hope. And I want to thank you on behalf of Franklin and our entire team in the field and back in Boone, North Carolina, around the world. You've believed in us a long time, and you have been our friend and partner. And I'll tell you, there's a lot of hard work goes on. And because folks all around the country and around the world but especially you, Franklin said to say, thank you for believing in us. And we are grateful for that. Very, we love you. Much. We sure do. Thank you. God bless you. You keep up the good work, too. We love you. Rich, you have a word. What is it? Well, you know, I really, I believe with all my heart that there's a parallel here to the story of Job. Oh, let's go. That never in, in the history of the world has there been a man as high as Job that fell from that height to the low, lowest possible dimensions of life where you, you lost everything except your wife and uh, <laughs> you're scraping boils off your body with broken pottery. She said, curse God and die. God yeah. nailed her, she had to have 10 more kids. But the thing is, uh, the point is to fall from this, this height to this low depth only for God to bring Job back to twice the height he was ever before. Was, ever was. And so the truth is, friends, that tonight we really do believe that, as Joseph said you know, to his brothers, what the devil meant for bad, God's going to turn around for good. That at one time, hundreds of years ago, Haiti was the jewel of this oh, part of the world. Yeah. And then it is, it's just fallen. Now with this earthquake, you, you, couldn't, you couldn't be in a worse situation. And yet we believe God's going to bring them back double to what they were ever at their height before. That's the belief. We, and let me just say one thing about this. I know you don't want to talk about money tonight, but there's a principle that I think is very important. We have just come out. What have we always taught? When you're in financial problems, I mean, every, I don't care if you're uh, charismatic or Baptist, whatever you are, every preacher of the gospel said, so when you're in trouble financially, give your way out of trouble. And here we have come as a nation out of the most desperate, as a nation, financial duress in the history of our country. 
since the Great Depression. We come out of this terrible financial duress into the new 2010, of course, Pastor McKnight's preaching, double grace, double blood, blood, double favor, blood, 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 double your blessing. Double. And, and the thing double. is, here, we come right out of it into what? Into what? The worst earthquake in the Caribbean in 200 years. Last time there was an earthquake that bad or tra uh, travail that bad was when Napoleon Bonaparte was the emperor of France. Yeah. All right. So here we are, all of a sudden, tell me, have you heard anything on American television in the last couple weeks about our financial problems here in America? Not one word, not about, it's about the economy, stupid. None, about that, none of that stuff. What happened is right away, our president said, we're sending $100 million. Now, that's just the government. All the other governments of the world combined are going to give $37 million. China's going to give a million. Right away, in our terrible financial times, we're going to give $100 million. That doesn't include any of the church giving. That doesn't include any of the NFL, the baseball, the basketball, any of the players, any of the businesses, any of the corporations. And I'm, it's almost as if God is in Haiti signaling the planet, hey, I'm right here. You want to know where I am? I'm right here in Haiti. And if you want to get out of your, it's all about Haiti. But while you help Haiti, you can see yourself out of your own trouble. Hallelujah. Amen. That's true. I received that. That is wonderful. It's true. So just, you know, you know, I can see nothing but good. No. I'm sorry. I just can't see anything but that it is going to be so so incredible for every single person. They had no hope. Now they have hope. They see us coming. I love it. Suddenly they have hope. You know, Jan, we were talking about that. Where is Satan now? He was yeah. destroying the place. And the oh, everyone's saying always oh, the ruler of you know yeah, Haiti no, and all this yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah where, what is he doing now for Haiti? Yeah, and where this is he? Is I bet he's not there anymore. <laughs> he's a coward, is what he is. <laughs> he's like running away. But you know, this is a time where Christianity and faith and oh, Christ and Jesus oh. will be exalted. Let your good works oh. shine before the oh. Lord, oh. shine before God, that they'll glorify the Father in heaven. I You're going to see it. emerging from the rubble amazing pastors. You're going to see missionaries coming to our nation from that place. You're going to see That's a, the truth. You're going to see a nation saying thank you and a pattern for how we can get out of world problems in this situation. I really believe this is a pattern God says. Do you do this to the least of these? You do it as an unto the me. The least of these. I love that. I love that. No. I, I, think, I think that this is um, the greatest opportunity um, since I've been alive for the Christian church to show Global yes. compassion. Yes. I, I haven't heard anybody talking about what's your denomination, uh, what's your theology. Um, and when the pastor said what he said about God is transmitting, God has a way of getting uh, ourself off ourselves. Isn't that the truth? And, and, and sometimes the thing in which we call problems. Yeah. Yeah. People who thought they had problems yeah, three uh -uh. weeks ago, no, no, no problem. their problems have turned yeah. into praise. Yeah, I know. And sometimes... When you, when, when God really shows you, and while you was talking, Pastor, God was saying to me, he was saying, you was talking about how the attention has been brought to Haiti. And there's a price for the transfer. There's a price for the anointing. There's a price. There always has to be some type of sacrifice when God releases something. Um, in the kingdom, we've, we've made um, blessings too easy. Come on, We've had please. blessings without no seed. We come want on, blessings just with somebody just throwing oil on us. Go, go, but there go. has to be a price because there has to be a seed of sacrifice, and that's what God done. Wow. He gave his only begotten son, wow. and that seed, that price yeah. is paying off in our life today. Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes we got to understand that Haiti has paid a price, yeah. 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 but the manifestation of what God is getting ready to do yeah. is going to be so far greater mm. for our light affliction is but for a moment. Yeah. Wow. But when it's all said and done, wow. God is going to get the glory. Yeah. Revival. There are people now want to hear about God in Haiti that didn't want to hear about him three weeks ago. And there were people in America. 
pastors are coming together. Haitian, I, I, I never had Haitian pastors in my church. We had Hispanic, we had Haitian, we had Jamaican, we had Bahamian, we had white, black. I saw a reflection of the yeah. kingdom. Yeah. And it's time for us to realize that what God is going to do, he's going to say, y'all going to pay attention to Haiti. You said that they were the poorest nation yeah. in the world. Yeah. I got to create yeah. a shaking. Yeah. 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 Because when he said, when I shake it, he said, the silver is mine. Yeah. He said, the gold is mine. Yeah. He said, the earth is the Lord. Yeah. And sometimes God shakes something so he can transfer it. <laughs> and there's a price Jesus. for the Jesus. transfer. But God is restoring. I'm so excited because people are talking about, and I know the tragic, and we're not trying to discredit the no, lives that were no, lost. Absolutely. But the Lord said there were more miracles than there were tragedies. I love it. Oh, there are. There were. Yeah. So sometimes in the, when God begins to transmit something, he transmits so we can identify our transgressions. Once we recognize our transgression, then here comes God. He begins to transform us because he renews our mind. Once the transformation of the mind comes, here comes the transfiguration, which says, now I look like God. Now that I have a transmittal from God, I acknowledge my transgression from God. I have a transformation because I'm thinking different. Because I used to complain, but now I'm thankful. Now that I have a transfiguration from God, I now have a transformation that says I look like God. Hallelujah. After that, now I have what we call transitory. And transitory is when God does something quick that you wasn't expecting. <laughs> after transitory blessing comes, the next blessing comes after transitory blessing is God becomes very transparent. You don't have to wonder what he's doing. He's going to show you what he's going to do. And after that, it's nothing left but the transfer. And right now, God is saying he's transferring the heart of people. Yeah. Right now, we are really refocusing and looking back at our life and saying, you know what? What's really important? Yeah. What's, what's really important? Everybody's refocusing. People now saying, if I don't get my hair done, so thank God for hair. Yeah. If, I, if, if I don't get a new car, yeah, it doesn't matter. I can yeah. walk. I can walk. Yeah, I have life. I have yeah. breath. Yeah. I have an opportunity to give God praise. Yeah. And it's amazing. And, and I have to say this, and this is no flattery. This is to you, Jan. We know your heart has been in Haiti. And we know that you wanted some things to happen. Yeah. And you shared some things that you wanted to happen, even with things that you wanted to build. But sometimes things look like Satan. Mm -hmm. And it looked like the devil is working, but God really is delaying something till he shakes something. Mm -hmm. Because what God said is what we thought for was warfare, it's actually an opportunity for me to let you see how my hand is going to move. Hallelujah. Everything that you wanted to happen in Haiti is going to happen. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes. Sometimes I'm convinced. Sometimes yes. I'm convinced that God has to move some things. So now your heart that might have been misunderstood years ago. And sometimes people who are evil or don't have the right motive, pure people scare them. Yes. <laughs> Jesus was the rock of the truth. And when your purity comes in front of carnality, yes. carnality has to come up with barriers to stop purity. Yes. And sometimes God said, let me show you, you can't stop purity. I'll shake your carnality. And then you'll be glad that purity is coming back to help you. So, so what I see God doing is it's, it's going to be great. I'm, I'm so impressed with what Samaritan person. Pastor, the, your heart. And um, this is really an opportunity for I, I urge every person um, who loves God. This, I believe, is our greatest opportunity to show the compassion of Christ. I love it. I am so, 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 so proud of every single person that is just praying for, loving, thinking about, you know, how. I can't tell you how many times a little gang that I travel with will go, you know, nothing really matters anymore after yeah. you've seen that. It just doesn't, does it? No. You don't care anymore about things, about yourself. You j it's just turned my 
eyes clear around yeah, 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 yeah. just saying, Jesus, those little precious people that have nothing and nobody, a lot of them. And I could hear on CNN, of course, I didn't turn it off for a week. I, I could just hear those little groups of precious people over in the park in the dark singing, God will take care of you. And I would just die. They were singing it in French. So CNN didn't know what they were singing. Said, well, they're just singing something over there. You know what? I didn't hear one voodoo drum. Uh, thank you. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. Thank you, Jesus. My God. My God. And I want to tell you, Les, you know, when we first started going down there 20 years ago, all night long, all night long, not one, not one. You know, when those precious people see Jesus in all of this, what is wrong with us? That we don't see Jesus in everything that we have and everything that he has given us. It's all from him. They see it. They see it. And I love it. I saw that one little lady that was buried for five days came out. The Pembroke Park fireman. And said, what did you do? She said, I prayed to Jesus. I prayed. That went around the world, people. That went around the world. That when people are hurting that badly, what do they do, Les? They just stand. You know what? Stand. We've got just a song stand. that's going to bless you. Donnie McClurkin wanted to be here so bad. He called me, said, Jen, I want to go to Haiti with you. And believe me, I'm planning to go. <laughs> Soon as they scout it out, I'm going to be down there. I love it. And, but he, he said, I love you and I want to be there. But one of our guys, two of our guys from Holy Land, where is Demero? There you are. Come on, babe. He, one day he did this for me, stand up there. And it's Donnie McClurkin's song, Stand. And he does it to uh, we call it miming, and it is absolutely gorgeous. So those of you who have wanted to give up, anybody anywhere that has ever wanted to give up, all we need to do is just stand.
doesn't have an army. I've been there a number of times. I've been in the presidential palace with President Preval. I've stayed at the Montana Hotel. Both of them fell in the earthquake. And um, they don't have an army. But when Pastor McKnight was talking about the price that Haiti paid, I, I just have from our church here in Miami. Just, just hundreds of prayer requests for families who they can't find their family. They live here, they can't find their family or their family die. I want to say, Jan, Haiti does have an army. Do. Whenever America has gone to fight for our freedom and they've had, we've had warriors fall, we've brought them home with honor. We've built stones over top of their graves, and we honor them. We have holidays for our armies. Fallen. Every one of these family members, because one day Haiti is going to rise, and Haiti is going to stand. And, and, and TBN couldn't bring theirs on tonight because it kind of goes up to the ceiling, all the needs that have been phoned in to TBN around the world. But this is their army. The ones that died in the earthquake, I believe, didn't shed their blood for nothing. Somehow, through this fallen army of people, God is going to raise up a nation that will stand for Jesus Christ. And tonight, I want us to pray. I want us to pray for all the families right here in America and around the world that have loved ones that they can't, haven't heard from, they don't know where they are. I want us to pray for miracles yet and that these families would hear that God has spared their family, that they're going to hear from their family, that the lines are going to be reconnected, they're going to hear. But for those that have been lost in this earthquake, they haven't been lost for nothing. It's going to rise again, Lord. In fact, I want the whole audience just to stand up. Come on, let's all just, let's come out here. Pastor Roland, come on with us. We're going to believe God together tonight. And I want us just to, if you could just join hands, audience, right? And let's, let's raise our hands. Let's raise our hands all across this audience tonight. Let's, let's ask the Lord tonight to do a miracle. Let's, let's ask that Haiti is going to rise again. Hallelujah. That we're going to be a part of that resurrection. Can we do it together? Father, you told us in your word, unless a corn of wheat falls in the ground and dies, it cannot bear fruit, much fruit. And tonight, Lord, we know of a hundred and something thousand. They say it's going to be 200,000 or more who have died in Haiti in this tragic earthquake, Lord. We pray tonight, Lord, that as these corns of wheat have fallen and died in this tragedy, it's like an attack from the devil himself. 
that Lord somehow a whole nation would begin to rise up out of the rubble and that Lord somehow Lord you would put a nation back together that you would rise buildings and houses and developments and neighborhoods and schools and hospitals and learning centers and business Lord that it would be restored that Lord you would do what no power can do you said if you call upon me I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not you said in your word if you believe if you believe if you believe if you have the faith the size of a mustard seed you can say to this mountain move and it shall move and tonight Lord we got a lot of stuff to move for the victory to be complete we ask that you would move it Jesus you would bring the victory Jesus can you say amen, everybody? Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 Haiti's going to rise again. Haiti has an army. Hallelujah. Now it's a prayer warrior army. We're not giving up on Haiti. Oh, God bless Haiti tonight. Hallelujah. Jen, I do, I do want, I want to just say one thing. We, we do need to do a little business, all right? Because I know that there are pastors, there's deacons, um, there's church leaders from all over the U.S. at least that are watching, want to do something. They like they've got they've got all kinds of materials, and, and they want to send it to the people of Haiti. Uh, we, we this is the port that it goes yes, out of. All it's right, very good. And so we're going to accept all that everything you've got it's going to go right to the ports we need to know when it's coming in let me tell you how we need it packaged all right this will be the easiest for the loadings whatever you have to say let me tell you explicitly what we need right now right now we don't need water the government's going to send water and organizations like samaritan's purse is going to provide the water systems right now what we need people from america to send lots of rice and beans uh, if you're sending any kind of canned items, they need to have those pop tops on the top. There's no can openers over there out of this rubble. It's got to be able to pop it up. Uh, canned milk for children. Dried beans. Absolutely dried beans. Yeah, absolutely. Dried beans, obviously dried rice. That's a, So definitely that. But if you have canned vegetables, canned baby food, it's got to be able to pop open easily. Then we also need hygiene supplies and soaps and 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 baby you know d d diapers yeah i don't want to just come on and say it but that, that's what it is all right um we we need um lots of uh oh god i had a whole list uh hydrogen peroxide uh, medicine med any kind of medicine now when it's in all medical supplies all medicines all uh canned supplies all rice and beans dried all baby supplies, all that, we would like you to make it easier for us to put it on pallets, to shrink wrap it, is that the right term? Right. That plastic, and it, it can't, nothing perishable, nothing. It, it'll be rejected, all right? It has to be shrink wrapped on pallets. Load your trucks if you want to rent U-Hauls or get big semis. We've got semis on the way that will get here tonight. We've got big U-Haul trucks coming tonight. Uh, it, you load them up, pastors, you can get it going. And if you'll check our website, peaceforhaiti.com. We're in partnership with TBN, uh, Don, Don Tipton, fr uh, friendships.org, tbn.org. Also, uh, our Miami Rescue Mission has over 200 men. They are partnering with us. It's the third largest mission in America. They are going to supply hands, muscle, hundreds of men at the mission to help package everything, to help get everything loaded. We've got the clearance from the ports. Uh, Pastor Steve Muncy's help as we go right down the line. All kinds of help that we're partnering. But if you'll go to the website, then you can let us know how your lo when your load's coming. We can't just have, if you'd help us know when it's coming so we can prepare for it. Because the only thing the docs ask for, Jen, we can bring it right to the loading docks at the port of Miami but we have to know when it's coming so that way we can schedule it out and if you'll go to that website it will help you know how to reach us to let us know when your loads coming and together we can make this gonna be a giant church effort and you're gonna stay on TV tell them to send stuff and pray and give so we're gonna do it together I love
love Pastor you. John. I, I just want to say, um, I just believe when it's all said and done, one thing I want to say to the people of Haiti, when it's all said and done, God um, is in control. And there's one thing, Pastor, that I want the people of Haiti to hear. Please don't be angry with this loving God. Because a lot of times when things like this happen, and they talk about how loving our God is, sometimes I found out that the love of God is released by when we have to trust God when we have Job-like symptoms. We have to trust what God has allowed that he is still in control. And there are a lot of people confused. And I want to bring just a little bit of clarity to it. God still loves you. Uh, hallelujah. God is not mad with hallelujah. Haiti. But God has allowed Haiti to understand the day that he had to give up his only begotten son. Because you really understand the love of God when you have to sacrifice. Well, God is telling me to say this. Don't be angry with him. Help is on the way. I'm rebuilding the wasted places. And God is getting ready to do something awesome in Haiti and around this whole world. We love you, Haiti. Amen. God is still in control. And you know, Jen, Pastor McKnight, Pastor McKnight was just speaking to Haitian people. And we have Pastor Olin here, who is a man of God. And, and I think it would be good if he prayed in Creole oh, I know. tonight. I know. All those of English speaking or Arabic speaking people or Swahili, whatever language you are listening to us by now, tonight we're going to go for a minute into Creole. You won't mind that as Pastor Rollins, a great man of God. And that way this message that Pastor McKnight just shared, don't be mad at God. In fact, the Bible says that whom the Lord loves, he chastens. And when he does, he, he punishes uh, us sometimes and chastens us so that then he will accept us as a full-born son, full-fledged son. Could it be, Jan, that the people of Haiti have beat America to the punch? I believe God has accepted Haiti as a full-born son, complete. Come on, Pastor Rollins. Lead us in prayer in Creole. Seigneur, Papa, nous, nous connaissons où remènent nous en pile. Ou si tellement remènent nous, ou voyez celle grande petite ou en le Seigneur Jésus, il a été battu, il a été soufflé, il a craché dans la figure pour nous la vie. Et ces paroles qui disent, Seigneur, ces petites ou remènent que vous corrigez, ou disciplinez. Et c'est pour ça, oui, Seigneur, nous connaissons où remet Haïtien, où remet Haïti. Et nous disons merci, Seigneur Dieu, si tellement remet nous, lorsque bagaille s'est frappé, le monde entier campé pour aider nous, le monde entier campé. Non seulement aussi pour nous, et, et ben nous la main, mais avec tout cœur, nous avons senti ce yo qui frappé. Et c'est vous même seul qui êtes capable de faire ça. Donc, Seigneur, nous disons merci pour tout le monde qui a pédé. Merci pour TBN. Merci pour Jen. Merci pour chaque bien-aimé. Tout pasteur haïtien, africain, partout, qui a fait travail pour rebâtir Haïti. Au nom de Jésus, Seigneur, couvre et touche que chaque monde de quoi pour l'amour ça capable de fleurir dans le cœur. Amen. Amen. Wow. You know, we've got the most beautiful audience here tonight, and I wonder how many of you are Haitian? Je, oh je, my je. goodness. We have a lot of pastors and leaders from the Haitian wow. community right here tonight. We love you so much. Yes. You know what? I am so honored. That's amazing. Raise your hands again, all of the Haitians. Oh, look at that. Oh, my goodness. You know, I am so thankful that Jesus sees me near Haitians tonight because you're where it's going on right now. You are, you are it on the earth. God is looking at you for something special and wonderful. 
Whoa, I are you just, I am so glad that God just let me touch you. Woo, just touch me. <laughs> Woo, glory, glory. You know what, everybody in here, you need to just hug a Haitian. Cause you're gonna get some glory all over. Come on, everybody in here. Charlie, get over there and hug a Haitian. Everybody, go. Oh, I love you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. Wow. Hug you some more, Haitian. Come on. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Woo! You just touched somebody that Jesus loves very, 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 very much. I love that. Did you hug you a Haitian? Good. <laughs> Come on, hug one more. Hug one more. Then we got a song for it. Oh, Wow, that was wonderful. <laughs> Gee, I felt the Holy Spirit in that. That was great. I love it. You know what? We've got some guys from the Holy Land. It's a wonderful thing to know the scripture in a time of trouble. And one of the things that the Lord says, and I love, is even though it's sad at night, joy comes in the morning. They're going to sing that for us. We love you. If you knelt beside the The master promised sunshine after the
wonderful. Isn't that a wonderful promise? We've all needed that wow. one. We've all needed it. And it's the truth. The brightest time for Haiti is there. It's there. It's here. And I love it. I love it so much. You know, we want to thank everyone that has been a part tonight. We have one more wonderful song uh, and um, just a wonderful scripture. We have one of the greatest actors in America here. He's at Holy Land. That was quite an introduction, wasn't it? <laughs> and there's one of the scriptures in the Bible. It's... Um, it's Matthew 25 that I just love so much. Every one of us love it. And to know that when we give our a part, we are giving to Jesus. All those little faces that you see in Haiti, when you're giving to them, you're giving to Jesus because he says, when you give to the least of these you're giving it to me and so we're going to have a little presentation of that scripture right now with some of the guys from Haiti I, I, and not are you not from Haiti I thought he was but he isn't but um, we're just going to have this wonderful presentation and enjoy it I haven't seen it so I'm crossing my fingers <laughs> <laughs> Go. Hey, you there? I'm waiting on the bus downtown. No, I mean, if you can sell, sell it. It's all about money, babe. Just sell the stock. I don't have any. Yes, yeah, please sell. What's that? Excuse me, sir. I had the Ferrari. Hang, will you hang on? Do you mind? Come on. Sorry, just, it was, he's nobody. Just some guy. I don't know. I don't know who he is. I don't care to know who he is. Okay. Hey, call me tomorrow. We'll do it, all right? All right. Bye. Money, money, money. Hey, how you doing? Money, money, money. <laughs> I'm not asking you to give money. Oh, brother. I'm asking you to give of yourself. Okay, buddy. Then he shall answer them, saying... For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. Look, do I know you? I was a stranger, and you took me not in. I was naked, you clothed me not. I was sick, I was in prison, you did not come to see me. You did not minister unto me. Wait, who, who, who are you? Verily I say unto you, inasmuch as you have not done this to one of the least of these, my brother, you have not done it unto me. Look, I don't know who you are, but... These words were not wasted on that individual. May these words not be wasted on you. Help, oh, over here, come on. You all right? Hey, it's okay. Here, sit up. You're bleeding a little bit. Hey, help me out! I hey, was hungry. One sec. And you gave me meat. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you took me in. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick. I was in prison, and you came and ministered unto me. I've only helped him, sir. That's right. Verily I say unto you, inasmuch as you have done this for one of these, my brethren, you have done it unto me. Thank you, my brother. Come. Come, brother. Wait, wait, I, I, don't, I don't know your name. Do you, are you? Blake. You know my name? 
I have known you before you were formed in the womb of your mother. Well done. Thank you. Wow, that was blessed. Thank you. Thank you. You ought to hear him read the book of the Revelation. Oh, my. Unbelievable. We love you so much. What a beautiful night this has been. I know Jesus has been pleased. I know he has. Because, you know, he already has all of the answers in heaven for every single soul that's in Haiti. He has the answer. He has the place for them to be ministered to. He has the house. He has the healing. Hallelujah. He has all of those things for them. Sometimes he wants us just to partner with him as his bride and ask him, Father, Will you do what we have asked you to do tonight? Will you bless those people? Will you change that nation? Will you let Jesus be glorified in that nation? We love you for it. And we believe you're going to do it. And we're standing with you, Lord, in every way we can to just see that Haiti is a brand new beautiful, fantastic place on this earth. I believe Hallelujah. it. Do you believe it? <laughs> we want all of our guests tonight to come on up here. You know, Jen, I think, Just give a, just stand. I think we ought to pray for the, the mission stations on, that yeah. are Everybody. in Haiti now. All right? Yeah. Because here's the deal. Yeah. Uh, we're shipping stuff. Americans, Canadians, people around the world are sending things. But if there aren't people like we just saw the acting, if there aren't people on the ground in Haiti right now, and, and there's great organizations. Uh, we were talking earlier in the back about this wonderful Baptist organization there where so much medical uh, attention is being given. You were talking about an Episcopalian oh, mission that yes. is incredible. Oh, yes. I'm thinking about the Convoy of Hope that's been feeding tens of thousands every day. And, you said someone and, just brought 60 orphans over. Yeah, John well, hey, you know, Everybody knows John, John Bevere. Bevere. Messenger International just brought 80 orphans in this past week. Another brother, uh, Brother Yeomans, out of Southern California. I just got an email from him today. He is, you know, Pastor Jim Reeves. That's his oh, cousin. Yes. He's a chaplain in Southern California, and their organization is bringing more. They were on ABC and, and CNN Saturday night. You may have said they brought 80 more orphans into America. Yes. Uh, I'm thinking of the mission of hope. Right now, there's so many missions that have been going on for years. And if when we get there, there's no place to stay, there's nobody to help send the doctors into the fields, the nurses into the fields, the mission of hope and all these other missions have vehicles already on the ground they'll take the teams out but we've got to pray for they're getting some of them are getting worn out tonight jen yeah, they, some of them have been was was sleep forever i mean they, they need sleep they need rest we need to pray a divine unction and then there are americans go over to people from all over the world are going there to minister as well uh, we leave on thursday pastor steve and i we've got a congressman from illinois that says we got to do more than a hundred million dollars I mean, this guy, Danny Davis, wants to send much more. He, he's going with us. I'm telling you, wow. you just don't know what God's fixing to do. But the people on the ground right now yeah. in Haiti who've been ministering for years, they need strength. Will you just reach up your hands, audience, right now? Can we pray for all the missions in Haiti? Father, in the name of Jesus, I'm thinking of Danny York and Don Tipton. 
and all those brothers right now, Dr. Terry Christ, who's there, my own son and his wife, and all the people, Pastor Ron Brummett, and all the people from Miami Rescue Mission, all the doctors from across America, Samaritan's Purse. But Lord, if there aren't mission stations in Haiti right now, where do we stay? Where do we lodge in order to help the people? I pray for every mission station and every missionary that's on the ground right now in Haiti. God, give them divine rest, supernatural strength, Lord. Lift them up, Lord, above all the melee of this situation and give them divine unction from on high. We agree tonight for this victory in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Glory, Man. glory, Hallelujah. glory, glory, glory. Wow. You know, one of the reasons that I was so anxious for Don Tipton to go is because on his big boat that we've taken to Haiti and put it in the port many times is this. You can, you can house like 30 people yeah. on the boat. Yeah. And so they have a place to stay. There's trucks on the boat. You have transportation. There's gas on the boats, you know, so you have all that. Then there's, of course, the generators, which is so incredible. The helicopter, which can go and fly to places where you can't even get any other way. And all of the doctors and nurses can go. So God has provided. He has provided. And what a joy. For us to be able to say, Jesus, we saw you there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We saw Thank you there. You, and we wanted to bring you, Thank you Jesus. a cup of cold water. Yes. Jesus. We wanted to cover your nakedness, Jesus. 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 We wanted to visit you in the hospital there. Jesus, Jesus. We wanted to do what you said for us to do to you. And I love that. One of the other things that uh, Smile of a Child, I haven't even mentioned Smile of a Child, my goodness. But yeah, <laughs> thank <amen>. you. <laughs> We're down there too. And I sent... Smile of a Child sent $100,000 to Don Tipton for the friendships, for the boat, for the gas, and everything that he needed to get. But one of the things that's on the boat is these little, um, help me, they're, they're, they're little mini hospitals. They're portable. I don't know what those cars are called, like cubicles or something, and they're just wonderful. They're all set up with their own generator, their own, uh, yeah, like, a, a, like yeah. that. And, and he just takes them off. They put them on the back of the truck. They go down the road. When they see some medical needs, the doctor's right in there. He gets off. He helps them. And I think there's seven of those that's on that boat going. So it's just in containers. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. They've set it up. All the medicine is inside it. There's a little table to, to lay the little patients on. There's a little, what do you, yeah, what do you, the little oxygen masks and all of the things. They're self-contained little hospitals that can go up and down the road, and that is wonderful, and they are there. So we're doing everything we can. And if you have any wonderful ideas or little witty ideas of how we can reach those people, let us know, okay? Amen. If you have any special prayer requests for people down there that we haven't mentioned, let us know. Um, let's just remind him, we, we had like 50 greetings to Haiti from a lot of beautiful people around America. Steve Harvey and Cece Winans and everybody just wanted to say, Haiti, we love you. So we're going to roll some of those at the end. When we go out right now, you get those little special messages up. We're going to start with Jesse Duplantis. He can make them laugh, and that helps <laughs> heal them, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> but we love you and thank you. And I want all the pastors just to give you a little final word. Pastor Rich. Well, Jan, this, you know, we have divisions, the Army, the Navy, the Air Force, the Marines, and they make fun of each other. <laughs> they all oh, were tougher than you were. But when the battle hits, oh, yeah. oh, there's yeah. no making fun of They're each one. other. They're there's one. one. And there are different divisions in the church. 
Different, God's raised different ones up for different things. All right? And we kind of just chuckle and how we can't, you know. But when it's time to battle, when it's time for war, no more divisions. We need to unite. Don't criticize someone for what they're trying to do. If they're doing something that's goofy, God will expose them. You don't have to be God. Let's pull together. Let's work together. If the Christian church pulls together, Jan, what could we do? Just for the power of God. You know, huh? there's Haiti again causing yeah. a miracle. Right All the churches working together. Amen. That's your big miracle right there. <laughs> I love that. No, Hallelujah. I just, I just think that what you said is, Pastor, is so true. I, I just really believe that the Lord has allowed us to reshift the focus of what the church should be doing anyway. I love it. And I love the fact that you mentioned your Congress, uh, our congressman, set it up to where um, they got Royal Caribbean crews to deliver stuff to Haiti. Congressman Corrine Brown, Good. District Thank 3. Wow. wow. Royal Thank Caribbean, wow. Th three trailers over, four trailers over, no, seven trailers over. Wow. And they got delivered today. Hallelujah. So it's wow. got people from the Port of Canaveral as well. It's got, there's no excuse for you not to send something That's right. somewhere. That's right. And That's if you can't send it, send something to send prayer. The prayer can reach. Somebody say, well, I don't have money. But you have the power. opportunity power. to decree and declare something Hallelujah. in your mouth. And if you decree a thing, God say, I will establish it. So we decree that Haiti is established the way God wanted it to be established. And I'm excited about that. Thank you. I love it. Hallelujah. There are and you know what? I just talked to Paul today, and he said to thank everybody for their love to Haiti. He, he's been down there with me many, many times. We've gone over the last years and fed and loved those people. They're so easy to love. You're so easy to love. Thank you. You're just special. You really are. And we love you with all of our hearts. And we're going to go out right now with... Um, Several people that you know and love just giving greeting to the Haitian people. Some prayers, some prophecies, and just some, some love to all of you. You're beautiful people. Thank you. And Paul would say, don't forget TBN when you're giving to. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> he just threw me a kiss. I know he did. <laughs> Because if it weren't for TBN, how could we have these wonderful announcements, you know, and all joined together for prayer? Oh, that's right. And don't forget that Holy Land on February 1 is giving all of the proceeds that day to Hallelujah. Haiti. So Hallelujah. that's wonderful. If you come to Holy Land on February 1, you're going to be doubly blessed. You're going to see all of this, which is so incredible. You know, this is a wonderful time. Don't get me started on Holy Land. <laughs> this is a wonderful time of the year to go to Holy Land. We've got some new wonderful venues. The Holy Land is unbelievable. Brother Benny Hinn walked in there. He hadn't seen it. He went, whoa, like this. I mean, it's gorgeous. You need to come to Holy Land all day and be blessed and we pray the sinner's prayer. I mean, you can't move from corner to corner to corner without getting hands laid or the yeah. sinner's prayer. Praying. It's a great place to come. We love you and we thank you. And Jesus loves you. And so do I. Bye-bye. God bless. Hello, ladies and gentlemen of the nation of Haiti. I want to pray for you, and in just a minute, when we pray, I believe God's going to answer us. Let me tell you something. You had a great tragedy there. We had a tragedy here in New Orleans with Hurricane Katrina. I know what it is to be without water, food, electricity, communication for days upon days. But God's word said that if we catch the thief, he has to return it sevenfold. Satan has attacked your country, and he's going to have to return back everything he destroyed sevenfold. Let me pray for you right now. Father, in the name of Jesus. I ask you first, Lord, to help the American people and all those that are helping today, Lord, to get the food, the medicines, the waters, and the different things of those people. Lord, I ask you, Lord Jesus, people that are caught under that rubble, that Father, in the name of Jesus, you'll give them health right in the midst of that terrible situation, that you will extend their lives so the people can get to them and minister to them today. Lord, I decree and declare that today in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. To all you in Haiti, you start believing for miracles. I 
I don't care what anybody tells you. You believe for a miracle. That's what we did here in the city of New Orleans. I want to let you know something. It was terrible, not as terrible as yours. But I'll tell you one thing. God came through, and he'll come through for you. If he came through for us, he's got to come through for you. This is Jesse Duplantis from New Orleans saying we love each and every one of you, and we're praying for you daily. And we're believing God for total, complete restoration of your nation and everything that was ever lost or destroyed in this terrible earthquake. You got somebody here in America that knows how to pray. We know how to pray. Hey, I'm Steve Harvey. Please pray for the nation of Haiti. Let's reach out to the people there with our love, support, and prayers. And our friends over here at TBN, they're reaching out to help the nation in every way possible. Let's pray for their provisions, healing, comfort, and peace as they endure this very, very difficult time. You know, this is going to be a long time of restoration, and we need to help them get through this initial state of shock and need. Our continued encouragement will definitely make a difference. Thank you very much. My name is Meadowlock Lemon. I'm a comedic basketball player, and I played basketball all over the world, played down in Haiti. I met the people down there. I love the people down there. And all of us here with the TBN family, we're praying for you. We're believing that God is going to heal your land. So each and every one of you down there, we're praying for you. We hurt with you. We cry with you. And we know things are going to get better. So each and every one of you, be blessed today. We love you very much. On January the 12th, 2010, one of the most devastating events happened in the history of this world. A small island nation by the name of Haiti suffered a 7.3 magnitude earthquake in the south of Haiti, thus leveling Port-au-Prince. Now, you don't understand what that means. That simply means that lives were lost by the thousands. Yes, even the hundreds of thousands. That means over one million people are left homeless on the streets. I want every one of you to realize that it is our job to rise to the occasion and to offer our prayers up to God and, and supplicate God on behalf of Haiti that God would touch and that God would cause Haiti to rise again in a grander and a more glorious way than it's ever been in its history, that you, through your prayers, would help aid Haiti. To every Haitian that is watching, we are praying for you. To everyone that's lost loved ones in this devastation, we are praying for you. To Haiti itself, we believe that through TBN, and the partnership of TBN, that Haiti will rise a new nation. I ask every one of you, pray for Haiti, please. I'm Pastor Donnie McClurkin. God bless you. gift this month, TBN would like to send you a special CD entitled Jeff Finholt Sings the Christian Classics. Precious memories How they linger. Recorded at Trinity Music City Studios in Nashville. Jesus' blood can make the vilest sinner these Christian classics will bring back special memories as you listen to them time and time again. To receive your CD, send your gift or pledge to TBN, P.O. Box A, Santa Ana, California, 92711, or give online at tbn.org. Hello, I'm Pastor Tommy Barnett, pastor of the Phoenix First Assembly of God. Like you, when I heard about the terrible Haiti tragedy, I was so touched, so moved, my heart was broken. And I began to ask myself, what would Jesus do in a situation like this? Well, we know what he did. The Bible said he was moved with compassion. He would heal the sick, feed the hungry, clothe the naked, and reach out to those that are in need. This is the time for the Church of Jesus Christ and the people of America to step forward, rise up, and do something at this time of need. There are so many Christian people, believers there, 
that need our help. There are so many unbelievers that need to be reached with the gospel of Jesus Christ. I know you pastors, many of you have already done like us, received an offering from your church. Ask your people to open their hearts with compassion. This is an hour of opportunity. This is an hour for God's people to step forward, reach out to the people, love them, care for them, and reach them with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Let me encourage you. Give. Give like you've never given before. Pray. Pray for these dear people. As a person that has reached out to the hurting people for years, I have learned that when you lend to the poor, you give to God, and He will repay. Oh, there's a blessing in giving, but there's also a blessing that comes when we reach out to these precious hurting people. This is the Trinity Broadcasting Network, reaching our world for 36 years. Discover the champion in you. Well, God bless you. Always.